Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Irene Dunn, Alan Jones, and Charles Winninger in Showboat. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Straight down the heart of America, for 2,500 miles of corn and cotton, town and city, rolls Old Man River. Rolling down to the sea in days gone by, he watched the epic of a nation building and the pageant of puffing steamboats. It's overture the song of dusky stevedores on the levee. But the strangest and the most glamorous of all the craft that ever sailed the Mississippi is the kind that's celebrated in tonight's play, Showboat. Almost vanished from the river now, the showboat lives on in this tender story and in the unforgettable music of Jerome Kern. I'm sure you'll approve our judgment in selecting the same three stars who played in the motion picture. Irene Dunn, Alan Jones, and Charles Winninger. And this fulfills one of our long-standing ambitions to bring Irene Dunn to this stage in a part that requires a large order of singing as well as acting. Charles Winninger is the captain of our craft. Irene Dunn and Alan Jones are star performers in his company. And the gay excitement of the steamboat stage is a colorful backdrop for the love story, the song, and the heartwarming drama of showboat. It's a happy event here in the Lux Radio Theater tonight, and it's a happy event in your home every day when you use Lux Flakes. Good homemakers have to be good businesswomen, too, and that's why millions like the thrift and the modern efficiency of Lux Flakes. Now our curtain rises on a scene of action and adventure as we present Act One of Showboat, Starring Irene Dunn as the lovely Magnolia, Alan Jones as Gaylord Ravenel, and Charles Winninger as Captain Andy Hawk. The Mississippi River, 1880, on the levee at Natchez. Steve Dawes moves slowly under the hazy morning sun, loading the side wheeler river boats with huge bales of cotton singing as they bend their backs to the task. Suddenly, excitement sweeps across the peaceful scene. From the river comes the brassy voice of a steam calliope, heralding the approach of a floating palace of entertainment, the Cotton Blossom Showboat. Pennants waving gaily in the breeze, she noses into the landing as the townsfolk swarm to greet her at the levee. On the top deck appears a jaunty little man in a long red coat. That Mississippi impresario... That genius of the floating theater, Captain Andy Hawk. Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for this kind reception. And now, now I want you to meet some of the greatest artists that ever played the river towns. Miss Ella Mae Chipley, the toast of Cairo, Illinois. Come on, Ellie. Hello, folks. Next, I want you all to meet Mr. Frank Schultz. Morning, all. Mr. Schultz is the villain in our plays, but off the stage he's as meek as a lamb and he wouldn't hurt a fly and he's stuck on Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> How about that, Ellie? Captain Andy, you just stop that. <laughs> you have to hold Ellie's hand all day. All right, party, all right. Yes, sir, that's the way we are, folks. Just one big happy family and I'm their father. <laughs> and party over here, party's their mother. How about that, party? You make me sick. <laughs> Yes, folks, just one big happy family. And now to give you another sample of what we got in the way of talent, let me call your attention to Rubber Face Smith, the funniest man in the world. Hey, Rubber Face, drop that mop and come over here to the rail. Folks, this is Rubber Face Smith. Come on, Smithy, give him one of your funny faces. Just a sample. How did you, folks? <laughs> Ain't that marvelous? Look at that smile. He got a heart of gold, a heart of gold, and teeth to match. <laughs> That's one of my originals. Tell him much more, and I won't have to see the show. All right, all right, Father, all right. And now, last but not least, I want you to meet the little sweetheart of the South. 
Miss Julia Laverne, our leading lady. Oh, hello, everyone. You all know her. You all love her. What more can I say? And over here, we have another famous ornament of the stage, Mr. Stephen Baker, the handsomest leading man in the Middle West. Take a bow, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll tell you a secret, folks. Julie and Steve play sweethearts on the stage, but in private life, they're man and wife. And when you see them act, you see real romance. So here we are, folks, just one big happy family. And don't forget the bill tonight. Tempest and Sunshine, that beautiful drama of tears and laughter. Concert after the big show. Bring the children. Come one day. I won't have my daughter mixing in with riff-raff show people. Now, party, listen. I won't. I'm sick and tired of this life anyway. It's about time we settle down somewhere and give Magnolia the bringing up she's entitled to. Oh, Magnolia's all right. She's getting along fine. I suppose you think that taking piano lessons from that Julie Laverne is all the education she needs. Well, I won't have it. What's more, there's something funny about that Julie Laverne, and I don't want her speaking to Magnolia at all. Now, party... Julia's the best leading lady on the river, so don't go starting any trouble. I'd expect that from you. You think more of your showboat troops than you do your own daughter's upbringing. I'll have more to say to you later, Andy. Oh, you will, will you? Just one big happy family. Ah! Oh, hello. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, you're not supposed to be here. We don't allow visitors on board. My heartfelt apologies. You see, I was attracted by your music, so I took it upon myself to climb over the rail. I'm very fond of music. Oh. Do you live here in Natchez? Oh, no, I don't. Uh, uh, my name's Rapinol, Gaylord Rapinol. Just a wayfarer along the river. So am I. Which way are you going? Either way. Where are you going? Anywhere Papa gives shows. Oh. Are you one of the players? You mean an actress? Oh, no, but I'd give anything if it could be. Why? Oh, because you can make believe so many wonderful things that never happen in real life. But wonderful things do happen. Only a few minutes ago, I was standing there down there in the levee, feeling sorry for myself. Well, now I'm here with you. Oh, I think I'd better go. Oh, why? Well, you see, you're talking to me, and I don't know you. Does that really matter so much? No, not to me. Well, if you like to make believe things, why can't we make believe we know each other? Oh, yes, and we haven't seen each other for 75 years, and you're my long-lost nephew. There's a scene like that in a play called The Village Drunkard. Oh, no, 75 years is too long. Besides, I don't like the idea of being your nephew. Let's imagine we've just met, hmm? But we really have. All right. Let's make believe that we've fallen in love at first sight. Only make believe I love you. Only make believe that you love me. Couldn't I, couldn't we make believe our lips are ending in a phantom kiss? Or to us, we might as well make believe our Couldn't you, 
few minutes, Ravenel. Why, well, certainly. What is it? You better come along with me. The judge wants to see you. What about? I ain't sure. Something about that trouble you got in last year. Come on. Just a minute. Will you excuse me, ma'am? I hope I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye. something. Nola, you know what your ma said. She don't want you talking to me. Oh, now, Julie, please. Please, this is important. Julie, I think I'm in love. What? (laughs) Oh, why, you poor, crazy little girl. You can't. I mean it. I mean it. Oh, tell me about it. Well, there isn't very much to tell. I was playing the piano, and, uh, well, I looked up, and there he was. And, oh, Julie, he looked so different from everybody else, and so... So beautiful. <laughs> you poor little lamb. He said he hoped he'd see me again. You think he meant it? I don't know, child. And I don't know as I like you to go falling in love with some man that nobody ever heard of. Suppose he turned out to be just a no-account river fellow. Well, if I found out he was no account, I'd stop loving him. Oh, no, you couldn't. Once a girl starts to love a man, she don't stop so easy. Well, couldn't you stop loving Steve if he treated you mean? No, honey. No matter what he did. You see, child, love's a funny thing. With no sense to it. That's why you gotta be careful when it comes creeping up to you. I know. Fish gotta swim. Birds gotta fly. I gotta love one man till I die. It's like the song you always sing, Julie. Is that the way it really is? Mm-hmm. That's the way it is, honey. You'll find that out someday. Folks, now, come on, let's get on with the rehearsal now. Uh, Julie, you're downstairs. Yes. And uh, we'll take the part where your sister just went out. And so and so and so and so and so. Long speech ending. And remember, dear, I'm your sister, and if any harm should ever come to you, I'll never forgive myself. Uh, that's your cue. You got your part? Oh, I know it. Huh. I wonder what can be keeping Parson Brown. Uh, that's it, Noli. Uh, play it soft. Uh, go ahead, Julie. She promised to be here before dark. And twilight is fast fading into night. Uh, fading into night. Uh, Can it uh, be he will not keep his tryst with me? Keep his tryst with me. Now yeah, keep his tryst with you. Uh, then rubber face rings the bell. Yes. Uh, then I come in, don't I? Yeah, that's right, Steve. Noli, play something for a parson. Good evening, Miss Lucy. I was... Hey, hey Captain Andy. Steve, Julie. Well, what's the matter yeah. with you? Can't you see we're rehearsing? I know, but listen, Andy. The sheriff ain't gonna let us open tonight. Uh, what's that? Right? What are you talking about? I heard him say so. He's on his way here now. It's it's something about Julie. What about Julie? Steve. It's all right, darling. Don't worry. What are we going to do? Captain Hawks? Who's yeah. Captain Hawks? I'm Captain Hawks right here. Captain Hawks, do you acknowledge to be the owner of the showboat? Of course I do. What do you want? Well, I got an unpleasant duty, Captain. You got an actress on board who's in this country illegally. How's that? A woman. Real name, Julia Dozier. Got the papers right here. Julie! I'm Steve Baker. This woman is my wife. My information says she was born in Martinique. It also says she's been in jail there. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Well, you better come along with me. But what? what's going to happen to her? What do you think? We're shipping her back where she belongs. All right. Then you can send me along, too. No, Steve, no. It's all right, darling. No. We'll be together. Get your things. And hurry up about it. No, Papa. Papa, don't Julie. take her. Julie! Noli! Noli! Well, I hope you're satisfied, Andy. Oh, where's Magnolia? In a cabin, mooning over that no-count Julie. Won't speak a word to me. You see now what your showboat has done to your daughter? I think the showboat's made a darn fine gal out of my daughter. Thing we gotta worry about is how are we gonna give a show tonight without Steve? You're just as bad off for a leading woman. Well, you know, I I was thinking we'd let Noli jump in. She knows all the parts. Over my dead body. There never was an actress in my family, and there ain't gonna be. Oh, I just meant to put her in temporary. She don't know much about acting, but she's got a smile worth a million dollars. Captain Andy, what are we gonna do? You got a show tonight, Andy? I don't know whether we have or not. Do you know any actor we can pick up to jump into the leads? Well, there's a fellow I met in town. Seems he's got to leave tonight, and there ain't no boat. 
Well, he asked me if we took on passengers. Of course we don't take passengers. Yeah. So I brought him along. He's waiting outside. A swell-looking fella. Well, bring him in here. All right, mister. Come on in. Good evening. <laughs> This is Captain Andy Hawks, Mr... Uh, Ravenall's my name. Gaylord Ravenall of the Tennessee Ravenall. I thought, sir, if I could have a bed in your boat tonight, I could pay you my fare tomorrow at Fort Adams. You see, I expect a remittance. A remittance. <laughs> Ever acted, young fella? Acted? Yeah, on the stage. Acted. Been an actor. I'm looking for a juvenile leading man. Fifteen dollars a week. Chance to see the world. No responsibility. Am I to understand that you're offering me the position of juvenile lead? That's what he means, young man. We don't like to pick up actors off the wharves, but we can't be choosy just now. Madam, your courtesy is only exceeded by your charm. <laughs> <laughs> he got you that time, party. You keep quiet. Mother, Mother, I'm sorry I acted the way I did. Oh. Good evening. Oh, come here, Nolly, come here. Uh, we're going to need you. Uh, you're going to be our leading woman tonight, and... Mr. Ravenall here is going to be our leading man. You mean Mr. Ravenall is That's going... That's right. Uh, come on, now, we ain't got much time. Here, here's your part. Uh, you take this, Mr. Ravenall. I'd like to hear how you handle dialogue. And now the idea of this character is you're in love with her. And you say, Miss Lucy, will you be mine? And she says, you'll have to talk to my father first. Now, you just try it, just a sample. Well, uh, what do I do, Pa? Oh, you just smile, Nolly. Uh, that'll get him. Well, go ahead, uh, Ravenall. Miss Lucy, will you be mine? Oh. <laughs> no. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. More feeling. As if you loved her. Nola, wipe that moonstruck look off your face. Oh, stop it, Barbie. Stop it. Smile, Nolly. Go on. Give him the smile. Now, go on. As if you loved her, Ravno. With feeling. Miss Lucy, will you be mine? Yes, I will. Nola, that's the wrong line. Hello, Nola. Hello, Nola. All right, step right up, folks, step right up. Come in and see tonight's great play, Love Triumphs Overall. I want you to know, folks, that we always put on strong moral plays. Yes, sir, the kind of plays you can bring your children to see. The kind where virtue triumphs over vice. I've been 20 years on this here river, and I ain't never put on a show yet where virtue ain't won out. I had some tight squeezes, though. Oh, right, right, right. go right in, folks. Go right inside. Andy, come over here. Oh, what's the matter now, Pathy? It's about that Ravenel. He's been looking at Magnolia ever since we left Natchez. Well, he'd be a fool if he didn't. Andy Hawk, do you mean to tell me you'd like to see your daughter marry your tramp you picked up off the levee? Good grief, woman. Can't a man look at a girl without having to marry her? Just the same. I'd like to know something about that man, and I'm going to. Oh, uh, forget it. Forget it? Yes, forget it. And when I say forget it... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. We get back to Natchez tomorrow, and I'm going to ask folks around there a few questions. Are you coming with me? I ain't. I like Ravenall. He's a right smart young fella, and he's the best leading man we ever had. Shifty, that's what he is. For all he talks so high about being a Ravenel of Tennessee. He is a Ravenel. He says he is. Didn't he show me the church and the tombstone of his folk? Oh, Hawk, you're a zany. I could say my name was Bonaparte and show you Napoleon's tomb, but that wouldn't make him a grandfather, would it? No, but if he was, it'd make him turn over in his grave. <laughs> Is that you, Nola? Gay. How did you get away? I can't stay long. I told Mother I'd fill her pitcher at the water down. She's waiting for me. Oh, we never have much time together, do we? But you can't stay a moment. She won't miss you. Oh, my, it's a beautiful night. Listen, they never get tired of that song, do they? Yeah. The harder they work, the louder they sing. Gay, do you like this life? Being an actor, traveling up and down the river? Oh, yes, why? Will you always like it? Well, that's hard to say. You know, it's a big world, Nola. There's such a lot to see and, and a lot to do. Someday you'll grow restless and you'll leave us, won't you? I may leave the showboat, but I'll never leave you, Nola. Oh, Gay. Will you marry me, Nola? Oh, marry yes, you? Yes, and Natchez tomorrow. Oh, but, Gay, I can't. Why not? I love you, Nola. Oh, father, what would he say? Your father, he gave me the idea. 
Oh, please, darling, say you will. Oh, Gay, I want to. Oh, I can't stand this way any longer. These stolen seconds, these little snatches of you. Oh, I want you all to myself forever. Oh, Gay. You love me, Nola? You do love me, don't you? I love you, Gay. I love you so. Darling. Natchez. Tomorrow in Natchez. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, according to the announcement you read down in the post office, you're all invited to the wedding of my daughter, Miss Magnolia Hawks, to her leading man, the Honorable Gay Lord Ravenel. <laughs> Seeing as how you all take so much interest in showboat folks, I thought you'd like to see the happy couple playing their romance off the stage. Oh, sure. The bride and groom will be out in a minute, and we'll all march down to the church. We sure will. Ah, here they are right now. The best-looking couple ever to be married in the fair city of Natchez. Into the carriage with you, Nolly. Into the carriage. Andy, Andy, stop them. Don't let Nola go with him. He's a murderer. Who's a murderer? That's Ravenel. He killed a man. Ravenel? Jumping Jehoshaphat. When? Last year. Ask the sheriff. Sheriff? Is this true? Well, it was a case of self-defense. Then he proved he had a right to kill. Are you going to let your daughter ride off with a murderer? Murderer be hanged. I killed a man when I was 19. You killed a man? Accidentally. Uh, Are you coming with us, Rachel? Where are you going? To the church. Noli and Ravenel are going to be married. Married to a murderer. Oh, she fainted. Captain Andy, she fainted. Are you sure? Sure. Good. Now we can go on with the wedding. Curtain falls on Act One of Showboat with Irene Dunn, Charles Winninger, and Alan Jones. While we're waiting for Act Two, here's a question for you. Who would you say is the most important buyer in the United States? We'd say Mrs. America, and our hats are off to her. Every year, approximately $25 billion pass through her hands for housekeeping and other expenses. Believe me, she's a smart buyer. She wants her money's worth, and she gets it. Naturally, we value her opinion, so we've asked a typical housewife to join us tonight, Mrs. Bertha Aldrich of North Hollywood, who has a family of two. Do you, uh, do you mind answering a few questions for us, Mrs. Aldrich? Why, I'd love to, Mr. Rich. Well, now, let's suppose you're making up your marketing list, and you find you need soap for, uh, well, for your dishes or your nice washables. What influences your selection of a soap to do that job? Well, it's speed, for one thing. I like to get my work done quickly and easily. So I buy a soap that suds up real fast. You know, Mrs. Aldrich, when you order new Quick Lux Flakes, that's just what you get. Speed. The fine sheer flakes burst into suds at the touch of water. And in water as cool as your hand, they dissolve three times as fast as any of ten other leading soaps tested. That's speed for you. What else do you want in a soap, Mrs. Aldrich? Why, I want plenty of good, rich suds, too. Lasting suds that'll do a thorough job of cleansing at minimum cost. New Quick Lux scores on that point, too. 
Ounce for ounce, it gives you more suds than any of the other soaps tested, even in hard water. It goes further, and that makes it thrifty to use. You get the things you're looking for in a soap when you put new Quick Lux Flakes on your list. That's precisely why I've been using Lux for years. I think it's simply marvelous, the dishes and all my nice things. Now you've got new Quick Lux, I like it better than ever. <laughs> I can see that I can't tell you a thing, Mrs. Aldridge. Not about new Quick Lux, you can't. But you can tell other people. Tell them it's not only fast and thrifty, but it's wonderfully gentle, too. It's grand the way it keeps washables new looking longer. And it's so kind to the hands. I'm a real Lux fan, all right. Good for you. For speed, thrift, and safety, buy new Quick Lux Flakes. They come in the same familiar package and cost you no more. Be sure to ask for the economical large size box. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act Two of Showboat, starring Irene Dunn as Magnolia, Alan Jones as Gaylord Ravenel, and Charles Winninger as Captain Andy Hawks. <laughs> Fifteen years have passed, and Gay's restless spirit has brought him and Magnolia far from the Mississippi, far from the old Cotton Blossom showboat. They live in Chicago now, in a grand hotel one day, in a boarding house room the next. For Gay is a gambler, and his fortunes rise and fall with the turn of the cards. It's 1893, the year of the Chicago World's Fair. Andy and Parthy have come to take in the sights. In the fair's midway, Parthy surveys the glittering scene with a cold eye. Look, Mother, this is the Congress of Beauty. Isn't that girl lovely? A hussy. That's what she is, a hussy. That's all you see around here, hussies and dudes. How much longer are you going to drag me around? Not long, Gay. said he'd meet us here just as soon as he finished some business. In a place like this. Hmm. Must be a funny business. Oh, Mother, why do you say that? If I've asked you once, I've asked you a hundred times how your husband makes his living, and I never get an answer out of either of you. Secret, mystery, how I hate not to know things. <laughs> Gay's doing very well, Mother. We have everything we want. We go everywhere. Magnolia, look. Look at the droves of men coming out of that place. What is it? Oh, that's the hoochie coochie dance. Hoochie coochie? Why, a man ought to be ashamed to be seen near that place. I wouldn't have any respect for a, a, a magnolia. Yes, mother. Magnolia. Is that your father? By golly, I don't see how she does it. Andy! Oh, uh, hello, Party. Where have you been? Ah, uh, Party, don't get excited. Were you in that. That, that, that hoochie coochie place? Uh, sure I was. You ought to be ashamed. Well, I was just looking over some types. Who knows, I might find an actress for the showboat. From now on, you can look for types someplace else. We'll go down to the Wild West show. Come on. Uh, well, we'll see you at the hotel later. All right, Pop. Bye. like it, Gay. You held every hand I ever saw in my life. Oh, the cards are just running for me, I guess. Oh, Gay. Oh, hello, darling. Waiting long? Oh, now, Barry. Are ready to leave? Well, look, dear, I, I've had a marvelous run of luck, and I can't leave now. I've got to go back and have another fling. Oh, Gay, do you think you ought to? Well, I've got to play while they're running for me. I'll be back in time to dress for dinner. All right, darling. Oh, Gay, I'm so happy. Okay. I'm walking on the Probable and unreal world, finding you 
Papa. There's very little to tell you since I last wrote. Gay is still doing very well, and I am fine. I hear that Frank and Allie have left the troop to go out in vaudeville. Wish them luck for us. Oh, I must tell you before I forget. We have changed our address. We grew tired of the hotel and have moved to a wonderful little place at 516 Ontario Street. Write to us there from now on. Love, Nola. There ain't anything expensive on Ontario Street. Come on, I'll show you what I got. Well, there's still somebody in there, but they won't be much longer. You theatrical people? That's right. Frank and Ella Schultz. Heard of us? Well, can't say I have. Well, here's the room. You won't find another in Chicago for the price. And how do you like it? What's this over here, a closet? A nice big one, too. You can look into it if you want to. <laughs> kind of empty, ain't it? Don't the people who live here have any clothes? There's a lot more space than they need with everything they own in corn. These are gamblers. They've been coming here for years on and off. Each time, they'd be living here for a couple of months. Till one fine night, he'd come in with his pocket stuffed with greenbacks. Then they'd wake up the little girl and off they'd go, bag and baggage to the Sherman house. And they'd be living there in quality for a while. Then they'd be coming back here. And one by one, their fine things disappear. First he pawns his fancy cane, then her diamond ring goes, then her fur coat. And this winter, the poor little woman has no coat at all, but a kind of a thing that neither you nor I'd be after wearing. Oh, good evening. Is that you, Nola? Ellie, that's right. Ellie. Hello, Nola. And Frank. Dear old Frank. How are you, dearie? Oh, I'm fine. My, but it's good to see you. How did you know where I lived? Well, as a matter of fact, I we... just came here to look for rooms. I, uh, told them you was leaving. Oh, yes, yes, of course. You see, these are only temporary quarters until we move into our new home on the lake shore. Meanwhile, we stop here. It's near Gay's business, and then uh, we'd like to help out Mrs. O'Brien. Hmm. Great help. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Schultz, I'll be downstairs. You can let me know about the room. Hmm. Help me out, Mrs. O'Brien. She's a dear old thing. Nola, is this your little girl's picture? Yes, that's Kim. Isn't she a darling? Uh, Eight years old this March. Gee, I'll bet Captain Andy's proud of her. Mm -hmm. Kim and I go back to visit the old Cotton Blossom most every summer. But in Chicago, she's at a convent over St. Agatha's. Gay insisted on giving her every possible advantage. Oh, Gay. Gay doing well, Nola? Oh, yes, yes. He's a big success. <laughs> well, now, tell me something about yourself. Oh, we're doing pretty good. Pretty good. Listen to him. <laughs> we're practically headliners. Well, where are you playing now? Uh, well, we're just sort of breaking in an act. We open New Year's Eve at the Trocadero. Oh, I've been there often. Mm -hmm. uh, not lately, though. Oh, say, Nola, I, I was thinking if, well, if you need a little money, I could fix it so you get a job. You know, fix up a little act, maybe singing and playing like you used to. Oh, that'd be fine, uh, Nola. Oh. I'm afraid Gay would never hear of it. Of course, I'd like to. Uh, just for a lock, I mean. I don't need the money. Oh, no, of course not. Come in. Boy, I just left this envelope for you, Miss Ravenel. Oh, thank you, Ethel. You're welcome. Hey, that's a big roll of bills there. Oh, yes, yes. Gay was going to stop off at the bank. Uh, will you excuse me a minute, folks? I've got to see what Gay says. He may want me to meet him somewhere. Oh, no. No. Nola, dear. What's the matter? Is Gay hurt? Nola! Dear. By the time this letter reaches you, I shall be on a train bound who knows where. There is nothing lost to pawn and no more friends to borrow from. I am enclosing $200. This will let Kim finish her term at the convent. Then you can both go to your parents. I'm doing this because I think it is right and because I love you. Please believe I will always love you. My dear little wife, goodbye. Your own gay. Nola, can we do anything, Nola? I don't think so, Ellie. I don't know. I never thought of living without gay. I can't imagine it now. He seems to think you and Kim would be better off. Better off? 
I've never complained. I've lived like this half the time. One room, washing clothes in a basin, cooking food over a gas jet. But I loved him. And if all that went with him, I was willing to take it. I thought he knew that. I thought he knew. There's your little girl. She's coming now, Mr. Evans. Thank you. May I speak to her alone? Of course, you may. Daddy! Daddy! Hello, Kim. Daddy, where's Mommy? Well, Mommy couldn't come today. Now, listen, dear. Daddy's in a great hurry. Must catch a train. Where are you going? Away for a little while on, on business. I just had a few minutes to rush in and see you. Can't I go with you? No, dear. Not on this trip. But while I'm gone, I want you to think of me once in a while. Will you? Yes. I think of you all the time, and when I miss you, I always do what you told me. What was that? I just make believe. Oh, yes, dear, that's right. That's the system Daddy taught you for having anything you want, isn't it? Only make believe I'm near you. Only make believe that you'll be Find it fun just pretending. Couldn't you? Couldn't I? Couldn't we? And and if I'm a little late coming back, you just remember and and pretend I I've never gone away. Will you, sweetheart? Best of all, make me. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Daddy. And Kim, will you do something for me? Tell Mother. Well, tell her I came to see you, will you? After a short intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Act Three of Showboat with Irene Dunn, Charles Winninger, and Alan Jones. You know, music often describes things more vividly than words. For instance, suppose when you wash your stockings, you rub them with a cake of soap. The music would express that rubbing something like this. That's pretty bad, that rubbing. Can't you just see it roughening the silk threads? Weakening their elasticity so they can't stand the extra strain? When you kneel or stoop, they're apt to pop into runs like this. Oh, gosh, there goes another run. And those runs are expensive and embarrassing, Mrs. Housewife. They're a nuisance. I want to cut down on stocking runs. And you can with new Quick Lux Flakes. After each wearing, dip your stockings in rich, pure Lux suds. There's no rubbing. No harmful alkali to weaken threads. The suds are so gentle, so mild, as delicate as that music. They float out the soil without hurting the fragile threads. New Quick Lux Flakes save stocking elasticity. When you kneel or stoop, the threads stretch. Then, instead of popping into runs so easily, the threads spring back. That's worth knowing, isn't it? New Quick Lux cuts down on runs. And of course, that cuts down your stocking bills. Try it. Get the economical large box tomorrow. It comes in the same familiar Lux package, and yet it costs you no more. Fast, thrifty, safe. That's new quick Lux Flakes. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on Act Three of Showboat. 
It's two weeks later. Gay has dropped out of sight. And Nola, after the first shock, has turned her thoughts to the support of little Kim. Frank has offered to speak to the manager of the Trocadero. But just now, he doesn't seem to be having much luck. Mr. Green, oh, Mr. Green, can I speak to you a minute, please? I said no, I'm busy. Oh, but Mr. Green... Listen, will you please? Who are you? Who am I? I'm Frank Schultz of Schultz & Schultz, the well-known comedy team. Oh, the new act. Uh, all right, I'll see you later. Oh, but Mr. Green, I got a girl outside I'd like you to hear sing. Listen, I don't need nobody. I ain't seeing any more people today. I know, but I thought... Well, that you I... thought wrong, see? Hello? Who let you in here? What do you want? Well, I'm... I'm... Uh, that's the girl I mean, Mr. Green. I'd like to sing for you, Mr. Green. Yeah? If you'll just give me a chance, I... Oh, she's I... good, Mr. Green. She was a star on the Cotton Blossom Showboat. Star of a showboat. That means a lot in Chicago, don't it? Hey, boss. Yeah, what? I got a message for you from your prima donna. She's walking out. What? Yeah, she's through. She quit. She can't quit. Not on the day before we open. Who does she think she is? I mean, you better ask her that. She ain't speaking to me. Well, she'll speak to me or I'll... Hey, you. You mean me? Yeah. Don't go away. I might be able to use you. <laughs> I want to see Mr. and Mrs. Gaylord Ravenel. I'm sorry, sir, but I told you they're not stopping at the hotel any longer. They haven't been here for months. But my daughter wrote me. They moved it back here in August. I'm sorry. There's nothing that I can do for you, sir. <laughs> nice New Year's Eve, I must say. Uh. You and your surprises. They ain't here and nobody knows where they want. Well, Hawk, what do you got to say? Will you listen? No, I won't. I thought you won't. What are you going to do? Stand there all night? Get me the key. I'm going to my room. I'm all tuckered out. Oh, Potty, it's New Year's Eve. Let's go out. I bet Noli and Gay are out celebrating at some restaurant. Come on, let's go and find them. Like looking for a needle in a haystack. Get the key. Oh, here it is. You go on upstairs and go to sleep, and I'll look around for the children. I got a feeling I'll bump into them. Hawk, it's 8 o'clock. You be back here by 9, or I'll be coming after you. Well, you won't find me. <laughs> at the Sherman house anymore. No, no, they ain't. Anyway, I left Posse at the hotel at 8 o'clock. I, <laughs> I told her I was going to take a walk. And ever since 10 o'clock, I've been trying to think of an excuse for not being back by 9. Listen, listen, Captain Andy. Nola's here. Where? She's acting. Acting? What do you mean, acting? Gay never let her. Oh, Gay's gone. What? Yep, he went broke and quit. I'm telling you this because Nola's opening here tonight, and we want everything to go smooth. She it will be awful if, if she don't make a hit. What do you mean, don't make a hit? My Nola will stand this crowd on their ears. Didn't she always do it? Didn't they always love her on the river? My daughter is singing here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I regret to announce that our regular prima donna, Miss Patty Baker, is indisposed and cannot appear here tonight. But we are fortunate, however, in obtaining the services of Miss Magnolia Ravenel. Oh, Magnolia Ravenel, who's she? I'll show you who she is. Don't start anything, Captain Andy. Sit down. Miss Magnolia Ravenel. Oh. Quiet! Quiet, everybody! My daughter is oh, going to Captain sing. Andy, Captain Andy, Captain Andy. Snowly, look... It's, it's me, Lola. Papa. Go on and sing and make them like it. Go on, give them the smile. Give them the smile. Start that music. Come on, honey. Go on, ahead. She's got a squeal. He's got a fly. I got a long one. And I don't. Come, tell. Love and I. 
I sang at the Trocadero. You told me they would go on liking me. And how long has it been? Sometimes it seems like yesterday. Next week they want me to sing on the radio. I'll do one of the old favorites. And while I'm singing, I'll be thinking of you listening in down on the cotton blossom. Goodbye for a while. You're no late. Hearing that song takes me back a long time, Captain. Yeah, I guess it does. Guess you ain't heard Noli's voice in more than 20 years, have you, Gay? Oh, yes. I sneaked into a theater once when she played in New York. The voice you've just heard was that of Magnolia Ravenel. She retired several years ago, but her great theatrical name is still kept alive by her lovely daughter, Kim Ravenel, the musical comedy star. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I I guess that's all. You were here on a dress? When Noli gets back from the studio, she'll get my telegram. Do you suppose she and Kim will come down here? (laughs) Sure is shooting. Oh, you know, Gay, it's like fate. My bumping into you at Fort Adams yesterday. Certainly is. Oh, I can hardly wait to see Noli. Well, you won't have to wait long. Train will get him here by tonight. Things move fast these days, Jay. <laughs> you remember when you was a wild young buck in Chicago? Yeah, I remember. Look, Captain, you only found me by accident. Won't it be better if I just drop out of sight again? Oh. My life was happy and complete. I don't know about that, Gay. Anyway, don't you ever want to see Kim? Does she look like Nola? Spitting image of her. She's got a lot of your ways, too. Kind of dignified. More refined than most gals of today. Oh, I'd give a lot to see her. Oh, but I don't dare. I, I don't think I'd better. Now, oh, sit down, Jay. Trouble with you is you keep on blaming yourself. And the fact is you were just unlucky. The lucky people are the ones that get to do what they enjoy doing. I always enjoyed running a showboat, and I made a success of it. And Noli was meant for the stage, and she finally landed there. And now you, you was meant to be a gentleman. And the biggest mistake you ever made in your life was to try and earn a living. Nobody ever expected it of you. You was on the right track when you started to be a leading man on the river. Who knows, you might have got to be a big actor, and then you wouldn't have had to work anymore. Andy! Oh, God, there's Parthy calling me now. He said I better be going. Oh, I can't understand it, Captain. Married all these years, and yet every time she calls, you jump. What is it? What has she got? Uh, she's got a mean disposition. <laughs> Now, come on, sit 
stand still, darling. Mm. Never thought I'd live to be bossed around by my own granddaughter. Oh, why, Parthy, I don't boss you. Yes, you do, Kim Ravenel. You're just like your mother. Didn't you bring me this dress that's up to my knees and ain't you making me wear it? But it looks marvelous, darling. They're here, Gay. You want me to call Noli out on the deck? I... No, I don't know. I, I don't have to call her. There she is now. Hello, Papa. Hello. Oh. Noli? Here's... Here's Gay. Here's... Here's with Noli, Gay. Gay. How are you, Noli? Gay. I'm so glad to see you. Good evening, Captain Hawk. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Harrell. Isn't that your daughter, Captain Hawk? Yes, that's my Nola. Well, how do you do, Miss Nola? I remember you when you were leading Lady on the boat, and... Well, this is your husband, isn't it? Yes. And how do you do, sir? How do you do? I thought I recognized you both. Yes, I ought to. Why, I was here on this levee the day you were married. <laughs> my, my, how excited we all were. That was a real love match. Well, I'm glad to see it turned out well and that you're still happy together. <laughs> well, good night. Good night, dear. Gay, come up on the top deck. We can talk there, will you? No, my darling. Go ahead, Gay. You'll find it's just about the same up there. Same moon, same old water barrel, and same girl. <laughs> Maybe things don't change so fast after all. <laughs> Good night, kid. Gay. Gay, look. There's your daughter. There's Kim. <laughs> Bring to a close tonight's performance of Showboat with Irene Dunn, Alan Jones, and Charles Winninger. While we're waiting for our stars to return for their curtain call, here's a bit of news. A couple of months ago, at a YWCA convention in Atlantic City, a survey of 60,000 American business girls revealed that the average business girl hopes for marriage or a better job. She wants to know how to acquire charm, how to impress people, how to win love, and how to make a success of marriage. Every girl wants those things, Mr. Ruick, whether she's a business girl or not. She wants to be charming, and daintiness is so much a part of charm. That's easy to understand, Sally, because everyone likes a sweet, dainty girl. Well, they say if a girl doesn't understand the importance of daintiness, she's apt to miss a lot of good times, or maybe not land the job she wants. Well, that makes sense, all right. Now, here's a question a girl might well ask herself every day, as a sort of daintiness test. Are my gloves, collars, cuffs, and blouses spotless? Page new quick luxe flakes. What else, Sally? Another tip. Wash under things and stockings every single night. Why, Sally, it really comes down to one thing, doesn't it? Keeping everything beautifully fresh all the time. That's right. And it's so easy to do that with new quick luck. It's so marvelously fast. Of course it is. Remember, in water as cool as your hand, new quick Lux flakes dissolve three times as fast as any of ten other leading soaps tested. So it takes only a few moments each night to whisk undies or stockings or blouses through the beautiful rich suds. They float away every bit of perspiration, just like magic. And that's awfully important in this warm weather because, well, even the faintest trace of perspiration is apt to offend people. When a girl luxes under things every night, blouses, dresses, and sweaters often, she can be sure of passing her daintiness test with flying colors. Get the generous big box of New Quick Lux tomorrow. It comes in the same familiar package and costs no more. It's fast, it's thrifty, and it's wonderfully safe for everything safe in plain water. And now, Mr. DeMille is bringing our stars to the microphone. The cotton blossom is safely moored in our National Hall of Fame. And the three stars who brought us the magic of showboat, Irene Dunn, Alan Jones, and Charles Winninger, are here at our microphone for a curtain call they really deserve. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. It was a very pleasant reunion for all three of us back on the old cotton blossom. Well, I, I worked in the picture and played it a number of times in stock. But for you and Charlie Winninger, showboat must seem like a second home. I just about get my land legs back again when it's time for another cruise. <laughs> How many times have you played the captain, Captain? 
Oh, about six or seven hundred times on the stage and for three years or so on the radio. <laughs> That's a career in itself. Well, Charlie beats me, but I did spend about 40 weeks in showboat on the stage. Back in your old Kentucky home, Irene, you must have learned about showboats on the Ohio. Yes, there still are a few, but not as many as there used to be. You know, my grandfather built steamboats in Louisville, and I suppose there's a good chance that one or two of those boats turned out to be showboats. Well, that's a good, honest job for any boat. <clears throat> Say, uh, C.V., what kind of a play are you putting on here next week? Next Monday night, Charlie, we're presenting Alias the Deacon, a very human comedy with an unusual twist. Who are you going to have in it, Mr. Mill? Our star is Bob Burns. In the same role he played in the Universal Picture, just released. It's the story of a sentimental card shop who spends more time helping people than he does at his, um, trade. And Bob Burns has plenty of cards up his sleeve for Alias the Deacon next Monday night. I know everyone is going to enjoy that play, especially with Bob Burns. Good night, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night. Good night. You three can tie up at this wharf any time. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Bob Burns in Alias the Deacon with Helen Wood. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. War in Europe has brought intense suffering to millions of innocent people who are homeless and starving. The American Red Cross is raising $20 million dollars for immediate assistance to these women, children, and old people. Give as much as you can right now to your local chapter of the Red Cross. Heard in tonight's play were Verna Felton as Parthy, Hal K. Dawson as Frank Schultz, Inez Seabury as Ellie, Gloria Holden as Julie, Christian Coffin as Steve, Earl Ross as Dallin, Edward Marr as Jake, and Barbara Jean Wong, Arthur Q. Bryan, James Eagles, and Sarah Selby. Irene Dunn is now being seen on the screen in the RKO production, My Favorite Wife. Alan Jones' current picture is the great Victor Herbert, and he is now before the cameras at Paramount in There's Magic in Music. And Charles Winninger has just finished making the picture, My Love Came Back, at Warner Brothers. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Bruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.